So this is going to be a short one today, but the tease photos that are up on your screen, uh, when you rotate the tease photo that was done by CIG released, uh, basically looks an awful lot like an Ursa wheel or a larger ground vehicle. And then if you take a look at the 12 months of releases from the CitizenCon, which is in the bottom right of that photograph uh, that I put in, it clearly shows an Ursa-like ground vehicle. So many of us speculated about what this would be and what this could look like. And uh, basically, uh, if the rumors are to be believed, there is a Ursa named vehicle that appears to be a medical Ursa in rumors now i'm going to operate on what if there is an ursa medical vehicle like the community has been asking for for a while and what would it actually look like and to help me with that i have a ursa fortuna rover right here and i have an lynx rover here now as a reminder the ursa was mainly designed to be uh, not mainly designed but it was a big big focus of the Constellation series. And then the Lynx was supposed to be the luxury rover that was a little squished down, a little shorter, at least in the initial idea, to fit inside the Phoenix. But the Phoenix kind of grew a little bit, um, and they are awfully close. And you can see how they are relatively the same wheelbase, where you have a gap between the first wheel and the second wheel, and then you have two close together wheels between the second and third wheels. This was, I believe, originally for the Ursa, because I'm gonna go inside so I don't freeze to death for a second. Uh, but uh, this was to allow for this doorway, which the Lynx enjoys as well. However, unlike the Ursa, the Lynx has no door at the back. Instead, it has this beautiful panoramic window that goes above the seats and to the back of the seats. So while you're sitting, you can look out that window. And what you'll notice when you're sitting and you pivot the uh, seat, uh, the window that's facing on both sides is actually rather small and it's elevated. It's kind of hard to see very much out of it. I mean, it's better than nothing, but this window makes up for that. By them not putting a door in, this window has a lot of space. Now, why am I focusing so much on the Lynx Rover if I said it is rumored to be a Ursa? An Ursa, it's possibly a medical one. Well, because I believe that the Lynx Rover shows you what happens when you take a modified Ursa and you change out the entire back of it. Also, based on the teaser officially released by CIG, there is a very unique lighting system for the braking and for the back here. And I do believe it's at the back that this picture is from. I believe it would be right about here as like a fender. And that would be a light there. And just in case I'm wrong, just in case, because I, I could be, I could very well be. If I look from the front, you'll notice that there is no kind of spacer there to add the light because the Ursa and the Lynx do their lighting at the front, um, at the front, like so. So the, this style, which also is in the teaser, where it has a piece of metal over, over blocking the light, may, may mean that this is squished up and this is all hidden inside the frame, but that wouldn't be very Ursa or Lynx-like. But if you were to put those type of lights at the back of the vehicle it wouldn't fit this one but it would fit the Lynx because the Lynx does enjoy more lighting on the back than the Ursa all right sorry if I'm getting a little too in the weeds see the backup lights right there they're kind of snuck up top whereas this one has more integrated lighting and it looks much more sleek and sophisticated so these are the two models we have to work with here. This is an Ursa, and this is your Lynx. Now, when you actually go inside, it does make sense to use the Ursa for a medical slick. And the reason is because this beautiful door right here, if you have a ramp system with a door-like door, door -like ramp system like this, where you can just have it nice and protected when it's getting to the site, and it has good ground clearance, 
So if you're out, say, on the edge of an outpost, on a rocky outpost crop, you can still get over everything. And then once you're at your job, bam, bam, and you can drag the person who needs medical attention inside. And then I believe it'll be right here uh, that there's a bed. Uh, and to be fair, it could be either side, but I believe there'll be one bed in this space, a tier three bed, which is the lowest tier of bed we currently know of. Now, I I suggest a tier three bed because we know that medical treatments will consume a certain amount of medical supplies, and the larger the bed, the more medical supplies it would require. So a tier three bed seems to be right size for such a small vehicle. And also, we have to factor in that the tier three bed would not take over a dramatic amount of space. There's a little medical symbol there. And with a lot of these things, you have to focus on what type of amenities can a vehicle of this size realistically offer and what is practical. A tier three bed placed in here will allow somebody not to die die while you're taking them to safety. So you close the door, the person's inside, you get up here and you race away, and the bed is keeping them alive so they don't fully die. Additionally, if they have minor injuries, it'll just heal them completely. And I think it would still make sense to have two seats. There actually is a community-made concept for an Ursa Medical that has a bed on this side, has seats on this side, and then it used the Lynx concept where instead of having the weapons rack and such, it had uh, syringes and all sorts of medical supplies here, and then it added additional medical supplies here, like med pens and such. I'm going to link that in the description if I can find the video, because it does deserve to get mentioned, especially because it seems like it's getting its wish, or at least some version of it. And as a reminder, that's a fan-made concept. That's not officially what we're getting. What we're doing right now is I'm, I'm trying to talk about what the vehicle would, would likely look like, what it needs to be for it to succeed and then i want to talk about its implications on the game so um inside back on the ursa so the links um we can see that we have this little fridge here where it actually has drinks that you can take and um these are way more involved than you think because you could easily stock this thing with waters and medical supplies and such and if you want a successful um, medical Ursa, I believe it would make sense for it to have a storage unit like this. Some type of fridge-like device that you can place things in, you can take things from, and ideally already comes pre-stocked with medical supplies. A lot like the C8R, Pisces, that already we have in-game that acts as a medical kind of little ambulance. And I don't think it's going to supplant that, that, that vehicle, that ship. I think it's going to be more of a smaller scale. Additionally, a few weapon racks that are secluded like this would be a nice touch. And then once again, the bed would be across here. So it's pretty nice. Let's see if this storage works. It's another example of like integrated stuff that you I shouldn't do live because I don't know if it works. <laughs> no, the champagne got placed instead. <laughs> so uh, what we have here in this one in the links is a few things you don't need. So you don't need stock charts or anything like that, right? But in um, the medical unit, we may have things that are put away. And back to here again, we have to work with what you need and what would be nice. And um, once again, the bed being down here, some medical strap supplies strapped up above would be nice. And then I would try to take away these as much as possible. So if you have a body your animation won't get blocked throwing the body on and off the bed. Uh, additionally, like somebody injured, you know, they might need to like roll off the bed or something. So it would be nice if these seats could close still. And then you'd have like a full thing. Like when you first come on, you have more space. You're dragging a big heavy body and then you're flipping it onto the bed. Um, so that's mainly your workspace. And then, then these are just a nice to have. And for a small crew, I mean, a small four-man operation, it wouldn't be a bad vehicle for those type of hits. So I guess I should dive right into that topic. Should this actually turn out to be an Ursa medical rover, specifically an Ursa? 
I think that they should take design cues and elements that they learned from the Lynx, which is more modern than the Ursa in the pipe develop in the pipeline development. And I think that they should take this hyper specialized ideas and move them back over to the Ursa for the Ursa medical. Additionally, I think that the things that work on the Ursa, like the Ursa rover has these seats that are jump seats on the one side. They should pick a side and then allow you to open and close the two jump seats and keep those. And then add in medical supplies instead of a weapons rack here and keep one weapons rack over here next to the components and the storage lockers and such. A lot of this is really, really good. As long as it has four seats include and not including the bed, um, it's going to be quite a nice little vehicle still. And don't forget, it still has a weaponized turret on top, which I'm not quite sure how I feel about. Uh, for reference, usually medical vehicles, as they get bigger, uh, this may make them more of a target, although you could also argue that NPC and player player pirates and such might not take nicely to, a, to it anyway, so why not give it a little turret to fend off things when it's going into a dangerous area to get people out. Now, on to the topic of actual use cases into like what this will change. If there is an Ursa medical rover, one of the things that this thing would amazingly do is be able to button up and be taken out into the field. And that doesn't sound like much, but remember this thing is not going to have to deal with AA as much. And with distribution centers coming in that are rather large, it would be nice to be able to park a distance away from say a hostile retrib ret retribution center, distribution center, and literally be able to park up. <clears throat> let's play this out. Let's just pretend my game isn't stuttering or whatever. And let's say this is our ship. Obviously our ship would be much bigger, but let's just pretend this uh, looks like an F7, M7C MK2. Let's say this Hornet right here is our ship. We hop out of the Hornet, things are crazy. Instead of the ground going crazy, it's actual enemy fire that was hitting the ship. The ship's actually kind of damaged. We can't go any closer. The distribution center is this building right here. For whatever reason, the AA is on the other side. And yes, I've seen that before, where they like only partially the turrets are destroyed. We all pile into the Ursa rover. We play with the lights to make sure the lights are off as much as possible if we're going to deal with players. And we take this thing around. We go all over the place with it. Scat it out, figure out what's going on. And here's the thing. That turret that's attacking ships is not attacking me. And I can use the building even against it. So as long as I stay close to the building, if you're talking about a turret that's sitting on top of the structure, it shouldn't be able to hit you. And if we get too far forward and it starts hitting us, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. And you can literally pull back until it can't see you anymore. And then you all pile out. And the thing is, You've got a spawn, not a spawn point, but you have a medical point right here with extra weapons and ammo and such and a medical bed. That's a really useful tool if you guys end up in a fight trying to get there. I'm actually in an armistice zone, but I think I have a secret weapon here. <laughs> see if it'll pop out. There we go. <laughs> so we're going to simulate an attack. <laughs> So meanwhile, the NPC or even player turrets that are designed for AA work would not be able to attack us from the top of the location. So in the case of the NPC distribution centers, that's the hot topic right now. Think of it that way. You've got something. Oh, and by the way, this isn't as annoying as you think, because if somebody's wounded enough that they need help, you can just chuck them over the side. I'm being dead serious because it takes a while for somebody to actually despawn and die, die. <laughs> So you can just check their body over the side and just tell them, hey, we'll catch up with you in a minute. Because <laughs> as you're fighting through the place, as long as you're still outside, you can do things like that. And this ain't the best example, because I was hoping that this would have an opening up here. Like a really designed structure that's meant for you to actually engage and fight over. There would be openings along the sides that are like stairwells and such. This thing ain't giving me any mercy. Because it's not meant to. It's meant to look nice from above. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can climb this corner right here. 
And if not, oh well. <laughs> oh, let's holster our uh, quote weapon, end quote. <laughs> let's see if we can get up there. Nope, can't. So, in summary, um, try to picture this as a nice little tool to get you into places you're not supposed to go or get you an advantage on the field. And in general, this type of platform is handy. You're not flying in, getting yourself shot up. You're able to get in, and it would be nice to be able to extract through this and uh, have a vehicle that can literally do healing. It is not an I win button because what I want you to remember about the uh, medical supplies on board is that it does consume some each time. Now, it won't at first, most likely, unless they make that change surprise. Uh, they spring us on us on 3.23 if it's coming out in 3.23. Um, but no matter when it comes out or whatever situation it comes out in, it will eventually require medical supplies to run it. So what will happen is you will end up costing you resources to run that thing every time you heal people. So I want you to remember that. <laughs> I'm going to need a medical truck the minute I need it. <laughs> now, what did I just do? I did something silly. I'm having fun. But more importantly, I was able to use the paramed tool to save, to give my health back. I would not just be able to do a tier three injury that way. So if you've seen like your leg or your arm with like a, you know, a symbol on it and such, and it has a number, that's the tier of injury. Now, tiers of injuries can get really severe in the sense like you see blurry vision and uh, from detached retinas, literally, that's what the, the devs called it and stuff. Um, so like they can be very serious, but even like a tier three injury can be legacy where it literally limits the hard number of hit points you have. So your percentage of health state cannot go above a certain amount, even with paramed tool, which is a tier two healing hand tool. And also... Uh, it can change like your weapon capabilities, your ability to run, how long you can run, etc. Being able to jump onto a bed and just eliminate that tier 3 injury is very, very useful. So with our mission now <laughs> successful, let's talk a little bit about um, use cases on ships and, and outposts. I think in particular ships are by far where a medical Ursa would seriously change things because a medical Ursa means that you can put a tier three medical bed on any ship that can operate this thing. So if you can put this on a med, if you can put this on a ship, the ship is now able to do medical up to tier th on a tier three. Yes, I just got done saying tier three medical isn't the be all end all, but still, being able to mount this thing on say a constellation like I just described earlier, especially if the colonies never get medical. Some people have always push for the Aquila, for example, which is a science vessel uh, to have medical. Well, you don't have to wait for CIG to make that decision, yes or no. You can just pop one of these into the bay if it comes out as a medical Ursa um, and guess what you've got medical now you know tier 3 ain't the greatest thing ever but it's it's very very good in the sense of you're trying to do long-term endurance flights that are even reasonable distances you don't have to worry about oh man we're in pyro we're in the middle of dangerous territory I really don't want to risk docking at that pirate factions outpost we kind of have mixed relations with them uh, there's players camping it whatever that are friendly with them, not friendly with us. You don't have to worry about any of that with this. Because if you have this sitting in your in your cargo bay, in the vehicle bay, you just go down there and you turn it on. One of the other ships that will greatly benefit from this thing, if we have an Ursa Medical, so just imagine this as an Ursa Medical, um, is the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie has enough room to fit an Ursa. And if you put... <laughs> if you put... A, a, a Ursa medical on a Valkyrie that's designed to carry multiple squads of troops, all of a sudden that thing gets really interesting because that's one of the big missing parts of a lot of drop ships. The dropping is fine, and we're if okay, the purest among you are probably pointing out that it doesn't actually drop the seats out the bottom of the Valk. You go down the ramps out the back, you run out the side doors, whatever, and then it acts as a gunship to help support the guys that it drops. 
the folks that you drop are going to take injuries. And whether you call it a dropship or not, you are dropping off troops, and then those troops will have injuries. What do you do? Having a medical ship, a vehicle on board, is a really, really nice speeder upper of time. It keeps the people that are near death alive, and plus you can keep throwing them off the bed, getting the light injury people healed up, and then put the near near death person back on it while you're hauling back to base. That's pretty handy. I mean, at the end of the day, I can't think of many reasons I wouldn't want an Ursa medical. In particular, comparing it to a traditional Ursa like one of these, in this case, yes, it's the Emerald, but that just means it has a different paint job around the sides. That's all that means. In the case of the Ursas, unless you lose the turret or something, the only thing I can think of that would make it worse is that it would cost more, and it would probably only be a, a, a small amount different. And, I mean... <laughs> They could go all whole hog like the Lynx and suddenly say, oh, it's a luxury somehow or something, but I don't see that. I kind of see it as somewhere in the price point between a regular Ursa and the Lynx Rover, and that doesn't give it a lot of price movement. So uh, you don't want to price it too high where the sense of people start saying, well, I might as well just get a C8R and, uh, Pi Pisces. And that's, I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, the, the point is that where, where it makes sense to have a Rover it makes sense to have an Ursa medical rover if there's going to be one. And so I think this isn't going to like seismic, seismically change the landscape of what it's worth bringing, but I think it will become the staple of many players. Many backers, if you can fit this on your ship, it's worth it. For starters, C2s and M2s, and A2s for that matter, being able to squeeze one of these on there, especially on the C2 M2, where you don't have to make a decision not to bring something else to bring this. You can already bring up multiple other vehicles, a little bit of cargo, you can do a whole mix. Having this thing loaded in there is, is very nice. Having this thing on a Liberator is gonna be very nice. Remember, I'm just talking like as if this was a medical Ursa. We did, it's a rumor, the teases seem to be pointing towards it, but who knows? For all we know, they might, they might just release a military variant of the Ursa that's even more uh, militarized, but it doesn't look that way. So, sticking with the topic, if we have medical on a rover, especially in Ursa, I think it's a home run. There's a lot of vehicles, a lot of ships that can fit the vehicle. There's a few more ships that probably could use a pass to be able to fit it because they're just super close. But do your homework. Don't get too excited unless you have a ship to move this thing with. And also, one other thing is that in the near future, Outpost will likely have the ability to take advantage of these. Remember, I just got done saying medical takes supplies, medical takes this, medical takes that. Well, when you're building an outpost, every single thing you build is going to take a certain amount of resources and make material. So having a medical bay or something like that is probably going to be a specialty niche. Now, we don't know that for certain, but I mean, look at everything else in Star Citizen. They don't just allow you to have something for free. It, you, the whole point of the game is to make decisions about what you bring, what you build, what you consider, what you trade. Um, and medical is one of those many, many options. It's not the only option. But being able to bring a vehicle that can do medical that you can leave in the garage or leave outside is really useful. And yes, we do already know there's going to be vehicle garages and such. They keep talking about, or at least they said they're looking into. Uh, so, uh, having medical that you don't have to worry about, especially when you're early days of forming an outpost, or maybe you're just doing it off the truck outpost, if in the future that they, uh, they have issues. There was a cyclone empty. <laughs> and then um, being able to uh, decide for yourself, you know, when it's time to go to something bigger uh, on the medical side. So that's kind of my thoughts is where exactly is the Ursa, um, if it became a medical device, if it had a medical version. And I, I got good feelings. I really do. I, I, think, I think there's a place for it. And um, I don't think it's OP. I don't think it's something that everyone will buy in game, out, of, out of game on the, on the market, on the hangar. Although I do think a few people will be taking referral dragonflies and referral little snub fighters and stuff and changing it over to that because it is that useful, especially for late gamer players that already have a ship or two at the very least. Um, may see a lot of use for it. And uh, yeah, if you're already listening to this and it's already out or something we got a surprise for 3.23 or something greetings from the from the past and uh <laughs> i think you're in a i think you're in good hands as long as it's got a tier three bed as long as it's got some drop items that you can use for medical supplies out in the field 
it's going to be solid. And I think uh, in general, the Ursas are, are, are a great little vehicle. They're one of my favorite ground vehicles. And when you hear people complain about ground vehicles, yes, they do complain about all of them, how they bump rocks and whatever, whatever, whatever. But out of all the ground vehicles, by far the one that has the least complaints is the Ursa series. Because they're just, even though it's waggling here on the ground, um, it's one of the more useful vehicles. It just gets the job done. It understands what it needs to do. It's no BS, especially the Ursa variant. I'm not talking about the Lynx. I do enjoy the Lynx, but I do understand people don't like it. I get it. But um, with multiple entry points, ex entries and exits, it allows you not to get camped in as easily. It has a terror to help keep keep uh, keep the guys back a little bit. And that has enough room for you, for you and your friends. And if it has a medical one in the future, it'll even allow you to bring your friends home a little bit more intact. And that's a pretty good thing to do. Because uh, <laughs> then they'll want to keep playing. If, if they die every time you guys go out, you're going to have a hard time recruiting people to come play with you. To me, an Ursa medical variant is a home run. And I really, really, really want this rumor to exist. Oh, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for this experimental video, for hanging in there. Thank you to my long-term subscribers for sticking around. Make these as much for you as I do for myself. And... Tell me what you think, especially this isn't some type of farming comments. I genuinely enjoy these conversations. I'm, I, I'm sure you could extrapolate that by now um, and, and see I'm honest about it. And uh, do you think it, do you think an Ursa medical would like break the game in some way? Do you think it is too early maybe for an Ursa rover? Oh, that's medical because um you know your favorite ship is an imp is impacted i.e it can't fit an ursa already let alone um a niche model it just makes it sting more or uh should these uh clamps basically should this ship be able to be loaded in more unique ways like uh orca carry all style from gdi and uh command and conquer series <laughs> you know um basically clip on to something larger and just be carried around underneath a ship I'd like to hear what you think. You know, I've heard that one before and I really thought that was nifty. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone.